Well, hello everybody, welcome back to some more Williams Road to Glory action. Today, we're here for the Japanese Grand Prix. And as you can see, we return to the action from a season break. I believe number three of the season actually. And we do have an ultimate engine upgrade onto the car. This is purely for engine power. So very happy to see that arrive. We're going to go ahead and also add another ultimate upgrade to the car. And that's going to be for the aerodynamics for a drag reduction upgrade. So things are looking pretty positive heading into the weekend's action. Japan, a track that I love. It's so much fun. And the championship is in the balance. You know, there's a lot of stake. We've got only a few more races left and the championship fight is still pretty wide open between three or four drivers. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, after practice, things were looking pretty decent and we're going to try and carry that momentum into qualifying, more specifically into qualifying one. Now, as always, we're going to try and hope to get through with just one run in this session if possible. So you join me now on the end of my first lap in qualifying, currently 1.1 seconds faster than Matsushita through the middle sector, making our way into the final chicane, making sure we keep it together now and don't ruin the lap. Easy on the traction as we end the lap time here and running up to the line, it's going to be a 123.2 and that will be enough for P7 at the time. So that should get the job done. And indeed it did. George Russell uh, doing a 122.8 up in P6. So George uh, running a pretty decent pace there in Q1. Uh, we now move into Q2 though. And as always, we're going to try luck on the medium tyres on the first run. And uh, to be fair, it wasn't a terrible lap. I struggled a little bit to get, to get the tyres fired up. But once I got them in the window, they actually weren't that bad. But unfortunately, they just weren't quick enough. You know, they just lacked a little bit of pace. Uh, we set a 23.8 which is only six tenths off IQ one time, which is not bad, but it's only enough for P11 and at the time, last place. Uh, we now move on to my final lap in Q2 and we need this one to go through. We're currently P15, so maximum pressure is on here and we need to deliver. So through the final chicane, setting up the lap, making sure we get a nice clean exit, making our way now down towards the first corner. DRS wide open. and uh, We're gonna see if we can get into Q3. So at the turn one, the 50 meter wall you want to tip the car in break and i actually make a big mistake i lose the back end and then i lose it again on the exit so uh two moments there on corner entry and exit and that probably cost me a, a, an easy two tenths maybe even three tenths i just didn't get it right uh, we managed to recover some of the time through the s's on the soft tires of course but it just wasn't enough and um, that was a crucial bit of time lost though heading into the degners full commitment seventh gear and then down to fourth for Degner too quickly back on the throttle as you make your way up towards the hairpin and uh, you want to try and pick up a nice early apex get the nose into the cam but again making another mistake and losing maybe another tenth I feel like and yeah just in general it's been a pretty scruffy lap up until this point and I reckon we've left almost four tenths on the table that if I had to guess you know definitely three tenths for sure uh, but making our way out of spoon we found a bit more time so we're now four and a half tenths up and now it's all about the final chicane and how much can we commit into that corner as we're currently one and a half tenths down on Lando Norris in P11. So we need this to be perfect. Final chicane, third gear, short shift into fourth, using the curbs, quickly back on the power, bring the car to the right hand side for the shortest run to the line. And we improve by almost seven tenths, but it's not enough. Even with a purple sector three, we only go P13. And that is going to be the end of our qualifying session, which is... A real shame um yeah annoying the pace was there you know we could have easily got through the pace of the car it's just annoying we didn't maximize it the good news is bottas our main championship rival the man who's p2 in the championship got knocked out in q2 on the medium tires which is very surprising so we've been given a bit of a lifeline here but in general for my qualifying you know we could have easily got into that kind of p6 position i think and we threw it away so a big shame for us and uh, not ideal but nonetheless after qualifying uh, you can see in the rivalry Bottas does actually get an extra point because he did finish ahead of us and um, a disappointing qualifying but I'm hopeful we can try and turn this around the race so yeah without further ado that's it for qualifying and we're now going to move into the race here at Japan. Welcome along then to the magnificent Suzuka International Circuit, a stone's throw away from Isa Bay in the beautiful Japanese countryside. What surprises lie in wait for us today in the Japanese Grand Prix? 
A lap of this historic racetrack covers 3.6 miles, and it's the only time during the season that we race on a figure of eight racetrack. The drivers can expect some intense G-forces through the 18 corners on offer here as they experience some of the highest average apex speeds on the Formula One calendar. And keep an eye out for overtakes going into the final chicane. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Let's talk about Martinez. No good penalties, no mitigating circumstances, just a poor qualifying performance and a very disappointing start position for them today. They'll have a sinking feeling as they look up from the cockpit and realise they're in a different postcode to the start line for sure. But the one positive they can hold on to is that the car is quick and they can make their way through the field. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Albon, Sainz, Daniel Ricciardo, and Norris, Verstappen, Russell, Perez, and Esteban Ocon, Kvyat, Bottas, Charles Leclerc, Martinez, Stroll, Giovinazzi, Kevin Magnussen, and Nobuharu Matsushita, Grosjean, and Nick De Vries. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, here we are on the grid for the Japanese Grand Prix, P14, and this is a critical point in the championship and we need to turn this around. I believe we have a Mercedes ahead of us, which could indicate a possible grid penalty for one of the Mercedes cars. I can't quite tell. In terms of the race, though, we're going to start on the medium tyres. Now, the game says we can't one-stop it. I'm pretty confident I can. So we're going to try and go on the medium, get about 16 laps out of the tyre, switch to the soft tyre, and go to the end. So one stop, fuel-wise, 0.6, a little bit in the reserve just in case. And, of course always keeping one eye out for a safety car which we seem to get every single race so yeah this is critical for the championship we need to turn this around so the pace on the medium needs to be good so yeah let's jump into it and without further ado let's get into the japanese grand prix and uh, let's see if we can try and keep the fight for the championship alive right here we go we're gonna go to lee revs to see if we can get a good start five red lights and away we go not a bad start, but not great. Bottas is the Mercedes with a grid penalty, so Valtteri P12 having to start on the soft tyre. That is good news for us. He's our direct championship rival, so that's worked out quite well for us. We're trying to go side by side here with Giovinazzi. We're going to just about get ahead, I think, through here as we try to switch the medium tyres on at the moment. We've got Stroll and Leclerc side by side up ahead. But we're down a P15, so we've lost a place at the start. Let's see if we can try and maybe get a couple back. We're gonna go up the inside of Stroll here into the second deck nut. Squeeze him off. And then a little dive into the hairpin, I think. Won't go to miss. I thought about it on Bottas there, but we're gonna just get Leclerc for now. And I'll try and follow Bottas, basically. We've got Kofi and P11 on medium, so important to get ahead of him if possible. He's in the same strategy as us. Leclerc all over the back of me here, but he's not gonna have enough straight enough speed to overtake me so yeah we're not up to p13 so we've actually gained a place on this opening lap of the race the ar of course will run maximum power for the first two laps so we've got to kind of um, account for that in terms of my ers use but so far this is pretty decent let's see if um bottas goes for a move on Kofi. we know about the alpha tauri and their straight line speed at the final corner I'm going to stay on board here just to see if Bottas does anything. Yeah, he's going to try and force a move here. I wonder if we can get Kofi at the same time into the first corner. Not quite. Kofi out defends. So we're going to just set into a rhythm here. Bottas is going to go for it on Kofi out here. Side by side into the final chicane. I wonder if we can pick up the pieces and potentially get Kofi out. Maybe Bottas as well. Realistically, I don't want to pass Bottas, though, because I feel like it's pointless. He's going to be faster than me anyway. But look at this. We've got the run of Kofi out here. We're going to force him to go defensive. Can we try and get the move into turn one we go? It's a bit tight, but we get it done. We force our way up the inside. A little bit of space there at the pit exit and make the move. So P12 behind Bottas. This is perfect so far. Exactly what we want. Personal best, 126.4. That's about half a second off Bottas's fastest lap which is a 25.9. 
So running at a strong pace right now, we're dropping Kvyat and we're just about getting back within the RS range of the cars ahead. So uh, we should be there this lap hopefully. So, so far this is looking pretty decent. No one's really running away at the front except for Hamilton. And even then he's not that far away so I don't mind this. I'll say that, that's a bit of a mistake there. Oh, that's a silly one. Bit of a stupid warning there. First one of the race. Meanwhile, Bottas might go for the move on Arcon here, I think. We'll see. Would he go for it? Not quite. He's struggling to make a move on the straight. It seems like the Mercedes isn't that fast in terms of straight line speed. Which I don't mind. This is a good thing for us. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. Understood. Copy that. There's the one stop that I was looking for. And the team have realized and they're giving it to me now. So good to, good to know. We've locked that in now. So the team are expecting a one-stop race. Oh, that was close. Ooh, almost completely lost my front wing there. Running into the back of Bottas, just double checking for no damage. I didn't feel any contact, but you never know. There should be cars pitting this lap though, I feel like. There should be a lap where things start to open up slightly. Pace right now is pretty good. I feel like I'm starting to develop a slight edge over the AI's pace. The close pass Kofiat behind, so Kofiat is no longer a threat. And uh, it's still to rustle at the front of this little mini car, four car train, five car train. But I'm waiting to see if anyone pits. If not, this lap will definitely be the next one. But we can't really make any overtakes right now. Yeah, still no one pitting. Should be next lap, hopefully. Okay, there we go. Some cars are in. George is coming in for his stop. Surprisingly, not as many as I thought, but still enough. Um, we've got Ocon though ahead of Bottas. Ideally, I would have liked to have seen Ocon hit so Bottas can push flat out and I'll try and run with him. That would really help in terms of the overcut for us. Bottas going for the move now. I think they're both going to pick this lap so this could be interesting. And they're still side by side. This is going to cost me time. Hopefully though they both pit. Is this going to happen? Oh my god. Jesus Louise. They're going to go side by side into the pit lane man. That is... Pff, that's insane. We've lost a bit of time but We've now got the clean air. We've got Albon out front on mediums, so ideally we need to try and catch him. We're racing Albon today, I think. Whether we have enough pace, I'm not sure, but I'm going to try and see if I can hunt him down a little bit before we pit around lap 16, 17. Very good lap there. 25-9. We pretty much match the fastest up of the Grand Prix, so let's keep it going. Let's try and keep the pace up. Oh, whoa. That was close. Right, we're going to pick this lap. I've managed to get the gap okay, to below lap. seven seconds. Let's push for one more. Right, we're going to pick this lap then. Albon's picked up his pace, which indicates he might be pitting as well. We'll find out shortly. Yes, he is. So they are usually turn up their engines for their in lap. So into the pits we go. Easy does it. Right, decent soft tyres on. Let's see what happens here as we're going to hit for the softs. Fingers crossed we find a bit of clear space on track. That would be ideal for us. Away we go. Right, let's see where we rejoin then. There's a bit of space here. Just ahead or behind this Ferrari of Max Verstappen. So we're going to be ahead of Max. Yes, we are. So net P7. Everyone on the hard tire. So the overcut has worked out beautifully. The pace in the medium was strong enough. Only a few tenths off the fastest lap every lap, so that has worked out. And we're now on softs and P7. The only way is up. So let's push 10 laps to go. Try and get to these points. Time to send it and go for the fastest lap. Let's see what we can do here. We've got cars battling ahead, so we should be on the back of them by next lap. Wasn't quite able to get within DRS range. Albon 24-9. I was hoping for a little bit of DRS, but this lap should be enough. 24-6. I'll be surprised if anyone beats that. So yeah, we've done our bit now. We've got to try and make these overtakes. So let's see if we can get past Norris and Ricardo first. These are going to be the first two to get past. Oh, I messed it up through there. That was a crucial corner. And I got it wrong. Not ideal. We'll keep the pressure on. Again, no through here. I think this will be the lap. We're a lot closer this time. Just going to check engine temps to make sure we're in a good range to make the overtake. Right, let's see if we can set him up through Spoon. A little bit of wide again through there. Just getting a bit of dirt here, struggling to hit my apexes. And we've lost a bit of ground, which is not ideal. 
Engine temps looking okay, 118. I think this is going to be a little senderino. Has to be really. Here we go. Up the inside of Lando. And we get that one done. Are we close enough to get Ricardo as well now? Now that we've cleared Lando, are we close enough? Do we have enough ERS for this? Closing, closing, closing. Not quite, unfortunately, but we'll hopefully get this one done now. Right, let's get Daniel Ricciardo. And then hopefully after that, we'll go chase down signs. I think this race is probably going to be P4 and a fastest lap at best. I'm going to wait for the pit straight. Just going to set up Ricardo through the final chicane here. Those hard tires seem to be working pretty well though. I don't feel like I've got a massive pace difference. But here we go this time. We've got a bit more ERS than last lap and we're a bit closer. There we go to the inside. And job done. Another one down. Now we just got to get the signs. And I'll take a P4 considering the circumstances of this race weekend. Not quite able to get within DRS of signs. He's pushing at the minute, running at a pretty strong pace. Now I'm within a second, but this is taking me a bit longer than I'd like. I don't really have the pace anymore. Even Albon, for example, on soft tires isn't able to get past the front two. So it does feel like these soft tires have kind of maxed out performance a little bit early. I just can't get close enough. Signs is very, very fast. That hard tire is holding up very well, and I just can't really make any progress right now. It feels like Signs has turned up his engine. And the fastest lap by the AI seems to kind of confirm that. So at the moment, I don't really have a response to Sainz's pace. I really don't. I, I've got DRS, but I can't really get super close. I'll keep trying though. Two laps to go. Well, there we go then. That's going to be it for the race. The good news is Hamilton isn't going to win. The question is which Red Bull is going to win in the end. I think it's going to be Gasly, but I could be wrong. No, it's Albon, I think. No, it's, okay, Gasly wins Albon fastest lap. So Red Bull picking up pretty much maximum points today. Hamilton P3, and we're going to come home in P5 behind Carlos Sainz. That's it then for another fantastic Grand Prix here in Japan. A brilliant victory that has thoroughly earned the applause from the sellout crowd here today. Ant, talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. Well, there we go then. That is it for the race here today. Pierre Gasly with the W ahead of Alex Albon. Hamilton P3 ahead of Carlos Sainz. We finish in P5 ahead of Lando Norris. Ricardo P7, Bottas P8 with the fastest lap. So he in the end took it away from me. 24.1 uh, by half a second. What a lap from Bottas. Verstappen P9, Perez running out the top 10. And Russell, unfortunately, down in P13 out of the points. A bit of a disappointing race from George here today. Uh, not quite sure what happened to him, but we uh, look at the standings and surprisingly no safety car in that race, but we still lead 18 points clear from Valtteri, 48 points clear from Lewis and 65 clear from Gasly. So Gasly yeah, has worked his way back into the title fight and um, he could be a possible championship contender, but we'll see what happens as we're starting to run out of races now. Ricardo rear takes Russell for P6 and then in the constructors we are 78 points and I've got to be honest, I don't see it happening you know we need George to perform better and uh, be more consistent because I can't do much more so uh, yeah unfortunate but that's the reality either way we're going to move to the upgrades and see if we can try and salvage something in the constructors championship well after that race we kick off the renewed rivalry with Valtteri Bottas and we go in with a 3-3 tire this race which means Bottas has a one point lead heading into the next race. We also gain a little bit of driver acclaim as we now head into the upgrades. 
Now we're going to skip the invitation or event as I don't feel like we need it really and all we gain is a claim which is not really meaningful at this stage. We're going to look at the upgrades though and of course we have that ultimate aerodynamic one on the way. We're going to go ahead and get some more. This time we're going to go for the fuel tank positioning. So now we don't have enough points right now but we should have once we skip ahead a couple of days on the timeline. So we're going to cut all the way to the 19th. We've now arrived at said date so we can now purchase this upgrade and this will be probably the last one of the season so hopefully that will arrive and give us a big boost in the chassis department and as it stands we have two ultimate upgrades on the way and it's going to help close the gap to Mercedes massively so yeah pretty much job done we've got another upgrade scheduled on the 22nd and unfortunately it hasn't so I kind of jinxed it real shame so we're going to have to repurchase this one at the end of the next episode. Uh, 1,275 extra points to get this upgrade done. So, a bit of a shame, but nonetheless, sometimes it happens. But, yeah, a bit of a, an annoying one, really, to say it's the first ultimate upgrade of the aerodynamics. And we've been shat on. That's a bit annoying. But anyway, uh, guys, that's going to be it from this episode here today. The next race will be at USA. So, hopefully, you guys tune in for that one. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Subscribe for more daily F1 content. And as always, check out the two videos on screen. And a big shout out to the members of the channel for supporting my content. I really, really appreciate it, guys. But that is it from me here today. And I'll see you guys in the next one.